So I gotta make water and grow food on a planet where nothing grows. But if I can't figure out a way to make contact with NASA, then none of this matters anyway. Mark Watney is still alive. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. So the deal to make the movie happened so close to the book deal that a lot of us hadn't read it until we knew you were going to play mm -hmm. the character. So in our minds, you know, you are Watney. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for an actor? Uh, good question. I'd never thought of it. Uh, uh, well, hopefully a good thing because people will just accept me as Mark Watney and won't. Oftentimes with these really popular books, you know, there's a, there's a big, you know, you get a little uh, pushback from your audience because they feel like, oh, you cast him, you know. Um, but but maybe maybe it came on into the public consciousness and I was already attached and, and so I'll, I'll get a free pass. Yeah. You're famous for being a family man, not wanting to be too far away from your family. Did you think about that in crafting a character of a guy who is far away from everybody, maybe forever? Yeah, I thought about that a lot in terms of the people who do this work in, in, in actuality and, and how incredible it is that they do it. And, and, you know, a lot of these astronauts have families and they go on these kind of long deployments and they're just, they're, they put the mission before everything. And it's really selfless and incredible and something to be celebrated. And, um, and so I thought, I thought a lot about that. Okay, so let's do the math. I have enough food to last for 50 days. He's going to starve to death long before we can help. So I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. So Andy's book is like a technical manual of how you survive on Mars. So clearly the suspension of disbelief is going to be there. Did you have the opposite problem in making this movie, making it understandable, not too geeky? Well, I mean, I think the book does a very good job of, you know, he doesn't get go too deep into the weeds, you know, at least he doesn't lose someone like me and I'm, I'm really a layman. And, and uh, so that's what we really wanted to retain with the movie. We wanted it to feel uh, like, you know, the science wasn't beyond any of our capacity to understand and, and, and hopefully the movie audience will, will get a kick out of, you know, they're going to understand the problems that Mark has to overcome and, and watch him overcome them. So as it happens in this crazy universe, my mom was a professor of early childhood education. No way, really. Yours too. So That's I need awesome. to ask you, first yeah, and yeah. foremost, what about a movie like this to do informal public education once you put butts in seats with the drama and yeah. the excitement? I mean, look, hopefully this could be a really wonderful teaching tool. For There's a lot of really good science in this movie, and I think it's really, uh, you know, it's 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 certainly understandable for, for, for kids. I, I would think middle school kids could have a great, they could do a great packet with this. Um, you know, it could be a wonderful teaching tool. Listen, if I, if, if I understand them, it means a middle school kid can understand them, you know. Uh, I think a lot of it's the science teachers could have a lot of fun with this. Sure. Well, you are also passionate about access to clean water. Yeah. As it happens, we live on the water planet, so far as we know. Yeah. Mars, pretty dry desert place. Venus, not so nice either. Is there an opportunity for a little bit of an environmental message here in the Martian? Maybe. I mean, it might be, a, a, you know, a, a reach, but any time, I mean, look, again, if you're using it as a, as, as a piece of curriculum, I think you could draw a lot of parallels and, 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 and link it to a lot of things for people. But, uh, you know, they do think now there are these aquifers, these fr frozen glaciers underneath uh, the surface of Mars. Um, they're, they're getting, you know, it's exciting. They're getting a lot more understanding of a lot of this stuff. I talked to some people today who were explaining that one of the, the moons of Saturn perhaps has these kind of geysers. They're, they're, they're really interested in investigating. There might be a lot of water on one of these moons. So we're, we're learning more every day. Yes, follow the water. That's the strategy. Follow the water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll need to. It's going to be an amazing journey for all of us. We're all in this together. Everything's going to go south on you. And you're going to say, this is it. All right. Space.com.